This is Bruce Bochy, and you're listening to the Ranger Report. I do like baseball. The Ranger Report. Yeah, the Ranger Report. If you want the inside scoop, listen to the Ranger Report. Oh, here we go. This is the Ranger Report podcast. News, insights, predictions, interviews, and information about the Texas Rangers from the major leagues to the minor leagues. And now, here are your hosts, Ben Dieter and C.J. Berryman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ranger Report podcast. Uh, You can find us, as always, right here on the Preferred Health Solutions online studio of course we are part of the fans first sports network go to fansfirst.com or fanfirstsports.com sorry and to check out all the good stuff they have going on of course presented by dallas sports nation and as always as you heard off the top of the commercial again brought to you by walton's walton's everything but the meat i am ben dieter you can find me on the internet at beat 75 <laughs> i'm cj berryman you can find me on uh, x-rated twitter at CJB underscore RR. Good to be you can back. Find- I hated to miss the pre the preview to the World Series, but yep. adulting kind of sucks. Yeah, but- I hate when we have to adult. But anyway, Nathan and Tyler did a good job filling in for you. It was great. Yep, good job, guys. Thanks. You can find us at the Ranger Report on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, pretty much everywhere you go. Don't forget uh to oh, by the way, CJ, I didn't did you see the tweet? We got repped at the World Series game too. Mm-mm. Uh, someone tweeted out that they wore our Adrian Beltre shirt from our shop to the World Series game oh, too because he was throwing out the first pitch. Oh, nice! So, so my my merch has made it to the World Series. Nice, nice, nice. We appreciate the individual that did that. That's cool. Yes, yes, That's he wore cool it. Here. He wore it to the game, so it was pretty awesome. And, and Tyler was there too. <laughs> and Tyler was there repping the show as well. So yeah, yeah, he can't. We had and other. I mean, we had other listeners there that told me that sent me pictures and said they were there. So that it was, was awesome. I'm sure it was great. And of course, I hate John Moore because he's there on a media pass. But anyway, um, bastard. <laughs> what he gets for working for a professional, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> but no, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Of course, we did a preview to the World Series. I said Rangers in five, and that. Could still happen, but it'd be a little tougher now because you look at game one, the Rangers had every, did everything they could to lose that game. And then Corey Seager said, nah, -uh," and he tied it. And then there's always Garcia said, nah, -uh," and he went out. Now, in my opinion, I don't know. Bigger home run in that game, CJ, Corey Seager or Adolis Garcia? Seager, because you're not there without, you know, Adolis doesn't get to do what he does without Seager. And watching his emotion just like got me, like watching him get so psyched up about doing it. Yeah, he was fired up. I mean, right when right for, <laughs> right when the bat hit the ball, he just started. I mean, just yelling. Yeah. Just I've I I've never. I you know I know we saw some emotion out of him in, against Houston, but yeah. that Not like I've that. never seen Seager. Nope. Do that. Did not see him do that. Even not even close to that. No. That's right. Close to that. Close to that. In, what I thought was in, great was in the, LA, yeah. was the broadcast. Mm-hmm. They were saying, here's a guy who could change it in one swing. And, and then, then right then, like, he, right when and he's right tight. then, because he did it on the first pitch. Then you better right. watch. I mean, when Seager steps up there, yeah. you don't have long. I almost missed no. two at bats yesterday because he's out there swinging first pitch. Well, it don't John, matter. John Smalls, it was funny. He goes, the one thing you don't want to do is throw him a high foot. But then he goes, see? You don't want to throw him a high fastball. <laughs> he potatoed, man. He that, that, it hit the facing of the upper deck, I believe, didn't it? It was. I, I think it hit the facing of the upper deck and bounced back down. I, I think. think I was. I don't know. It got going, out so I fast. Was I couldn't going see crazy. what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I was going crazy. And then watching him around the bases and he was all fired up. I was fired yep. up. The fans were fired the, the atmosphere, man. Fans did a hell of a job this week. Oh yeah, both games. Yeah, and I'm, I'm even the second one when we were losing, they still got psyched and excited when they needed to. It was good. Our crowd did a really good job those first two games. And here's the thing: is before before we talk about those first two games, we'll have people in Arizona because that's where the Rangers have spring training. Yeah, so they'll there's, be there's Rangers, Rangers fans. fans they'll be Rangers fans repping us in in Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. I that's what I was thinking this morning when actually when I was yeah. in the shower was that uh, that we're going to be well repped. Yep. Uh, when we're when we're in Arizona, because I mean, there's a lot of team, a lot of folks there that were actually some Rangers fans before Arizona, and correct, yeah, had, had become Arizona. So, 
yeah, so that's going to be it's going to be pretty damn interesting, and I'm excited. But we'll talk about three, four, and five here in a minute. Right now, what I want to talk about is game one. Nathan Evaldi uh, gave up five earned runs, but he struck out eight, only walked one. It was an interesting game. I, we and CJ were talking off the air like we normally do, you know, all the good stuff before we get on. But we were mm-hmm. talking about how, uh, I mean, it's just kind of fun to watch their style of play, the old school squeeze, bunt, you know, steal bases, get around and score. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't against the Rangers, I would love watching it. But because it's against the Rangers, I'm nervous about it because th- those guys, when they get on base, they wreak havoc. They are. If I mean, that's that's old school. I mean, there's a lot of folks that haven't a lot of youngsters that haven't seen what we mean when we say old school baseball. Yeah. The Arizona Diamondbacks and, and Tori Lovello, they're they are the epitome of what it used to be. Uh, but not quite as much. It just seems like teams don't run as much because they used to run crazy. But yep. as, Arizona is really, really the closest team in the, in all of baseball now that plays the way they used to play old old style baseball with bunning. I mean, hell, Evan Longoria laid down a bunt. Yep. So they they move runners, they get them into position, and they get base hits. Uh, they're they're really yeah. good with runners in scoring position, and that's something that I, I just wish the Rangers had. And I've been kind of complaining about that for, I mean, all season long. Sometimes yeah. when they get a guy on second base, it seemed like I was telling Ben this off the air that it, it seemed like every time we had two outs and a runner on first and second, for whatever reason, this just stuck in my head when I'm sitting there watching it. Every time we have first and second. We don't get a base hit to drive in that yeah. run. It's yep. we're still trying to we're still trying to slug the ball, and that's just who we are. I understand, yep. but uh, you need to be able to, to to go out there and try to 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 put the ball in play and not try to kill it every time. Yeah. But you know, it's it's there. It's it's hard to complain because they got in the World Series doing it that way. They yeah, and they won and they won game one. Yeah, yeah, and they won game one that way. Yep. I mean, hell, they were down two in the ninth inning and, and the home run by Seegers we talked about and, and everybody's I'm aware of <laughs> yeah, uh, all of, all of, uh, all of the uh, Rangers fans in this country are aware yeah, of anyone who listens then, to this show for sure. Yeah. And then, yeah, it gave, gave us a chance. We went in and, and credit to John Gray. He went, yeah, yep. he came in out of the bullpen and, and I think that's a, that's a, an arm you're going to see once, maybe twice maybe three times more. Yeah. Uh, he came out, I think he had four K's. Yeah. One and two thirds yeah. innings, one hit yep. four K's. Yep. That's huge, 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 huge. Yeah. And that was after Bradford came in and pitched a shutout inning. Yep. Dunning, Dunning came, came out, in, yep. pitched shutout inning. Then Will Smith came in and got two thirds. Yep. Uh, so, and Jose Leclerc did two innings, two K's and, yeah. and we all know what happened after that is Adolis came up after getting hit on the wrist and we thought, uh, uh, that that looked bad. Yeah, it, it did. Certainly, looked right bad. on the wrist, it looked real bad. And so, it, it was awesome to see him walk back out there, and then he just goes out there and steals second base. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we know they they uh, intentionally walk Garber to get to uh, Austin Hedges, who had come into the game because the Rangers pinch ran for Jonah Heim earlier in the game. Again, yeah, first and second situation. And that's a hundred percent the correct call to yeah. walk, to get to, to hedges. Cause hedges, yeah. like I was thinking how amazing it would be if he hit a three run walk off homer right there. Yeah, that would have been, but I knew he wasn't going to, he looked like a pitcher hitting and it's, it's yeah. You he just did. can't, but I, I, he just hadn't, had any at bats. I mean, I cannot remember the last time he had an at bat, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was mid September. Yeah. So it's been a while. You couldn't expect that much out of him. Or you just hope that he could think one out somewhere and, and, and get a run in and 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 uh, you know, we'd be, we'd we'd get uh, at least a run out of that, but we didn't. But yeah, in game one the pitching was good enough. I mean they still Avaldi still gave up five runs. That's the thing though. You think about that Avaldi gave up five runs and four and two thirds. The the bullpen gave up absolutely nothing. Yeah, and it was a strange five runs. Yeah, it was. It was. It was an on. It was honestly. I mean, it was. I don't even know how to word it because he was still pretty dominant. Yeah. Well, the Tommy Pham home run was really the only hard, hard hit ball. Yeah, yeah. and then it, it, well, the scoring started off of an infield uh, chop. Yeah, high chopper. The yep. I mean, they got speed. Every one of their guys up pretty much up They're and down fast. the line has yeah. speed. Yeah. yeah, and they were able to get an infield hit. And that started the scoring on Uvalde. And but he had eight eight Ks, and it, he just looked, even though it was 
he gave up five runs. It still looked like he was in. It was just weird. It was strange. He yeah. wasn't. When you look at the five runs that he gave up, it wasn't that he pitched badly at all. Mm-mm, really, no. It, it was just that's why it was so strange. But uh, uh, I mean, if if we're gonna if he's gonna give up five runs and and we win a game, uh, it, well, I'll take that because it, usually that's not gonna happen. No, and. You know, and then we can, uh, we all know when Adolis came up and I just, for whatever, I mean, we've been watching, we've been covering them heavily, Ben, yeah. since, you know, since Adolis came up, yep. uh, we saw him come up and we saw how, how big of a flair he had for the big moments. I mean, he, yeah. there in uh, 20, his rookie year, hitting the walk-off grand slam against Houston that we swept the we swept Houston in Houston with yeah. that crappy 2021 team yeah. and he was a huge part of that again before uh, he had a grand slam in the ninth to to allow the Rangers to win I think he hit a home run I think he had a, hit another one in the ninth the, the night before and it yeah. was like man this guy might be pretty good yeah. he just he just for whatever reason in the big moments obviously the grand slam against to, to put Houston away in game six he just I just had a really good feeling right there that either that he's gonna that he was gonna get on base somehow but yeah yeah opposite field home run on a hard pitch to to go opposite field on the score of game two looks a lot worse than the game actually was in my opinion yeah the starter Montgomery was not sharp but again like you're saying I still thought he pitched pretty good overall he made it into the seventh inning yeah you could tell he here's the deal and I don't ever do this like for real. And this isn't why they lost the game. No. But the, the, the strike ball calls were one sided in that game. Oh, it's have you seen the statistics on it? Yep. No, I mean I'm saying because of the statistics, I thought they were, and then I went and looked it up and it was one sided. It's hands like, hands down. He got so many more calls than the Rangers did. Yeah, Kelly did. And let's not look again, we're not And that's not why they lost. Kelly was hot. I mean, even yeah. without those calls, they still win that game. Merrill Kelly, thirty five years old, come out of nowhere. And he was, and he was phenomenal. I mean, he was, he was hitting very his spots. good. And the thing is he was getting the call. So he took advantage of it. I don't blame him. Yeah. If you're getting the was, calls, do it, man. Well, even the home run that, that Garver hit off of him was a perfect pitch. Yep. And that was Garver just, admitted. Even Garver said, I've never hit a home run off that pitch. Well, yeah. It, Rosenthal asked him, uh, do you usually hit home runs on pitches like that? He goes, no, nah, no, not like that. Not <laughs> home runs. He's like, yeah. I might get a single. Yeah. Maybe a double, but he's like, no, that's I would never think I'd hit a home run on yeah. pitch like that. But he did it. He did. He got under it and got it out. But Kelly returned to, to and, and it just pitched. I mean, hell, he struck out nine and seven innings and only gave up three hits. Had a yep. no hitter for so for how long? So yeah. three innings, one run, nine Ks. I mean, no walks. Yeah. He pitched the hell of a game, and they were they got game. they get the calls were one sided. They certainly were, but it wouldn't have mattered. I don't. No, I was like, don't get me wrong. That's not why we lost the no. game. It was just it just added to the frustration. Yeah, we lost the game because we couldn't figure Miro Kelly out. Yeah, it was one of those games where they 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 scratched it out a couple runs early and really took the crowd out of it, and Kelly didn't yeah. let them get back in it. That's yeah, the that, way. It went. That's the way. That's what that game was. It's kind of what Evaldi did to the Houston Astros. It mm-hmm. was the same thing where they just could not solve him for most mm-hmm. of the game. And then their bullpen came in and did a really good job mm-hmm. again on on Saturday night. So hats off to them. Like you and I, we talked about it even before. Well, we didn't know who it was, but we knew, you knew, we've talked about it off air, that this was going to be a fight. This wasn't going to be like mm-hmm. a sweep, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the only reason on the podcast last time I picked five games is just because that's what I picked last time and it worked. So. I, I didn't I actually six. believe it wasn't on the podcast yeah. with y'all, but yeah, it's that same thing. Six come back home and win, win yeah. it at home in game six. But this is going to be a battle y'all <laughs> a game two, the Rangers offense was flat. And of course, one thing we know about this offense, especially in the postseason, is they don't have two flat games in a row. No. And they're going up against a rookie. We'll talk about that in a minute tomorrow yeah, night. Who but. has had a pretty damn good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah pretty damn good uh postseason but yeah he is a rookie and he hasn't faced an offense like this i mean you can uh, philadelphia is pretty damn close yeah but uh yeah. the rangers they they do other things better than the phillies do better uh, defense yeah. better defense as well yeah. much better defense it's, it's so, just crazy how good our defense has been this year let's talk about the giant elephant in the offense and that's the leadoff batter um yeah. it is time for marcus simeon to find it man he is at this point 
I mean, he's becoming a liability to the team. He cannot do anything on offense. He's no, batting 194. He has an OPS of 491. You know, that, I mean, other than Robbie Grossman, that's the lowest on the team, and Grossman has only had one at-bat so far. Uh, well, it's just one of those things where he's going through a, a, a slump. At the time, you don't want to be going through a slump. You know, it's just one of those things that happens every season. It's just his yeah. slump is happening in the playoffs. And it's, yep. it's obviously people are going to look at that outside of, of the organization, outside of the fans of the Rangers fans. Well, actually a lot of Rangers fans for whatever. Anyways, uh, I'll just get back to what I was my point here. Uh, he's, he's going through just one of those slumps and he, it looks like he's not clutch. Oh, he can't stay. He can't handle the big lights. BS. Yeah. You know, he's just whatever. No, it's, I mean, he had, it's, the, and, he had the most hits in the league. He had the most runs scored in the league. Yeah. He's going to, he's, he's, <laughs> if he comes alive, this offense is really going to take off. If he comes alive, then they sweep the rest of the series. But he's I mean, got to, I mean, it's, it's, he's running out of time here. Yeah. So, well, that's the thing is, is, I mean, like you said, everyone goes through something. He, he is like the anti Evan Carter. Evan Carter has come alive in the playoffs and become. Mm-hmm one of the Rangers best offensive players, Marcus Simeon has become probably the biggest liability in the lineup. And that's not who he is. I mean, you remember when he started his first year here in 2022, so slowly Mm -hmm. and everybody said to trade him or cut him, you know, get rid of him, all that stuff going on with the great overreactive fans. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to watch. It really is because we know who he is and this Mm -hmm. is not who he is played all 162 games. Uh, he, I mean, sure. He's tired. Everybody's tired, yeah. but he's just, it's, it's, he's just not, it's, it hasn't been the Simeon we've seen at all. And defensively he's been great. Oh, hell yeah. He made a, yeah. cr- that crazy play where yeah. that he made over second base Yeah, the other day. My goodness. What a play <laughs> falling towards third base. Yeah. And he's definitely contributing. And then again, Josh Young as well. Another couple of fantastic plays at third in the Holy cow. Yeah, he did. And then there there was last night in front of Adrian Beltre. Yeah, that was, that was what's (laughs) funny. I was about to mention that. And that there was one that got by him. Of course it was scalded and he was playing in. Yeah. So that's a tough play for anybody, even, even Beltre. Um, But he's Josh Young's. He hadn't, he hadn't shrunk under the lights. Obviously Evan Carter hasn't. Uh, everybody has has contributed at some point. I know Laoti's not. They've kind of figured out, especially right-handers. Yeah, well, really, Le- right Le- another one struggling. Yeah, he's throwing them, uh, throwing soft away and low, in yeah. a way, and that's 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 getting Laoti right now because he's not. He's just flat out. It's almost like a blind spot. Yep, that's where he's at with that soft. Well, away and what John Smoltz was saying on the broadcast, and I actually agree with, is he doesn't think he can see that ball coming out of his hand that slider away or that curve away because he just wildly swings at it every time. Like he has no idea where it is. And that's really what it looks like. It looks like he's not, he's not, he's not picking it up. He doesn't know. He doesn't pick it up till too late. And then he, he's already started his swing by the time he's picked it up and he cannot make contact with it. Mm-hmm. And he's batting two thirteen in the postseason, but he's had some big hits. So he's right behind Marcus Simeon is, you know, you're nine one. Those are supposed to be your big guys. Nine gets on one, knocks them home, you know, and that's not been happening. He was hitting over 300 at one point in the postseason, but yep. uh, it's cooled off obviously yeah. lately. But and it, it's good to see the Rangers running too, though they're starting yeah. to do it. Uh, obviously, not as much as Arizona, nobody does. No, but it's good to see them start to do it. And to be honest, it's probably you'll probably see more running, and this is off topic, but more running next year overall yeah. from everybody because yeah. there's there. Everybody's got to, it takes a little bit of time to adjust to the new rules that just came into place. Yep. Uh, so you're probably going to see more running. And I would imagine because the Rangers got some guys that can run. Yep. So I'd imagine they'd be one of the teams that you see go, you know, send runners more next year. But that's, that's beside what we're talking about yeah. um, or outside of what we're talking about. But yeah, so it, I, I'm not like, panicking or anything like that i mean it's we knew it wasn't going to be a sweep we knew it was going to be a dog fight yeah. i actually i mean I'm, I'm not surprised i guess you could say it's a one one going to arizona no i'm not like shocked like oh my god no, no. we were of course hoping it'd be 2-0 but i yeah. i knew the that there was probably you know a 50 percent chance that we were going there one one yeah it, it, and luckily 
I mean, if we're seven and zero on the road, and again, like, but well, also, luckily, we're not going there. 2 If Seager doesn't hit that home run, we're leaving right. Arlington O two. Yeah, that's if you think about it, how huge that ninth inning was yeah. in huge game one to be able to pull that one off, pull that one yeah. out and, and get, a, get the win. I mean, it's weird to say that that home run could have been a series saver in game one, but it could have been dude right now. It looks like it yeah. may have been. And that yep. one, and again, it allowed a Dulles to be a Dulles. Yep. And yeah, that, that whew, I was emotional. We were both. So <laughs> we were emotional as hell that in game one, I can tell you that much. I had chills for about an inning and a half. Yeah. Um, uh, teared up a little whenever the yeah. introductions were going on. So, Oh yeah. So did I. And yeah. So did I. All right. Let's take a short break. And when we come back, we will look ahead to game three, four, and five in Arizona. This is the Ranger report podcast on fans versus sports. Game. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Ranger Report podcast brought to you by Walton's. Walton's everything but the meat. So let's look ahead. The Rangers have game three coming up on Monday night in Arizona. Uh, they are going to be facing off against a guy whose name is really hard to say. Um, <laughs> I think it's Fade. Is it? Is it Fade? Hey, I think it's Fade. Okay, P-H-A-A-D-T. So Fade would make sense. Mm-hmm. And Scherzer, Scherzer against Fade. And this, CJ, is going to be... With the way the bullpen has gone so far, because of uh, well, because of just how many pitches they've had to throw, because these guys take pitches in Arizona, I think it's very important that Scherzer at least gets into the fifth inning, if not the sixth. Yeah, we were both surprised the last time Scherzer pitched against Arizona or Arizona against Houston. Yeah, how fast he got pulled because he didn't look. I mean, he wasn't fantastic, but he was good. I mean, he looked good, but. Uh, I maybe that was the plan. Maybe I, I I don't know, but I feel confident for sure. I mean, we got a future Hall of Famer that's, yeah. that's taking the mound against a rookie, but it's it's not a fully healthy Max Scherzer that we're going to see. So I would love to sit here and say, and that wouldn't again shock me. Anything's possible with with Mad Max, yeah. but to get five, yeah, get five innings and be pretty damn good because he gets you know he 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 can get a lot of ground balls. And if he can get guys out early in the count, like Valdi was in game one and Montgomery yeah. started out doing in game two, uh, he might, he might be able to go five. And I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to go six. It just depends how the game yeah. was going to be. Going. That's what I'm saying. If he, if he can keep his pitch count down and he can mm-hmm. keep the Rangers in the game, I'm not saying he's going to shut him out. You know, if you've given up one run through five innings, you know, or even two runs through five innings, but the Rangers have scored three. Or even if the Rangers hadn't scored yet, two runs is plenty for this Rangers offense mm-hmm. to come back on. If Max, basically, if Max has a quality start, I think the Rangers win Game Three. Yeah, I agree. And it, the bullpen outside of, and it was really, if you look at it, really just Martin Perez that that struggled. I mean, yeah. Well, and again, he 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 turned into old Martin where he wasn't getting the calls and he got mad. Yeah, he. You could and tell when, when they had to visit the mound. When, when he was yelling at the ump on his way off between innings, you could tell he was. Yeah. He was. He was not in his head. He was in his own head. Yeah, he point. he let that get to him for sure, and it it sucks because yeah. that was that was the back breaking moment. It was. And yeah, he, it was. Able to get out of that, then hey, we're still close. We're still feeling good, but then it got yeah. away from him. Yep. Got away from him and got away from the Rangers because it kind of yep. took their spirits out. And yep. Kind of tell they were like, okay, we're gonna have to roll off, roll this off, and get to get to Arizona. Yep. Game three, and that's but just, yeah, I think sure because you look, Spores, Chapman, and Leclerc are all fresh now. Mm-hmm. They've all had a couple of days off, so they'll be ready to go. So if you Mad Max can get you through six, then you've got Spores, Chapman, and LeClerc for seven, eight, nine. If you have the lead, I feel pretty decent about that. I know we don't feel decent about Chapman, but on rest, he seems to do pretty dang good. Yeah, he hadn't pitched in a while, actually. But so. even if even if he messes up a little bit, he doesn't seem to give up runs when he's had a couple of days rest. Right, and he actually he didn't pitch in game one or two. So no, he hadn't pitched since the LCS. Mm-hmm. So. He's well rested, and I think that's the best thing. I still don't trust him on two days. 
in a row. Definitely not. But but I, I with this rest, I would trust Spores, Chapman, and Leclerc to hold Absolutely. the game. Absolutely. I would trust them. And they're, they we're in good shape for game four. And like you said, or game three, sorry. Like you said, game four is the one I'm worried about. Obviously, yeah. don't know who's going to start yet. It could be Heaney. It they could don't be either. Game Dunning. It could be. I mean, we don't know who it could be. It could be Cole. Cody Bradford is an opener. I mean, we don't know what they're going to do for game for yeah. game four yet. Could so be I believe Gray. I doubt it. Yeah. He, I believe Gray, game Gray four. Stayed in the bullpen, but. I believe game four is pivotal. Pivot even even if the Rangers win game three, I think mm-hmm. you have to show up in game four. And I think game four is the one that I'm so nervous about not winning, which is why I think they have to win game three on Monday. Because if you go down three one in Arizona, you're you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in you're in deep doo doo. No matter you're right now. I mean, obviously seven and zero in the playoffs, great. Yeah, but now it's it's a whole different series. It's yep. the World Series. Everything you've done before at this point doesn't matter. It's a whole new ball game. It's best of five. Yes, they've got home field advantage. Yeah, the Rangers has played good on the road all year, and obviously yep. in the postseason. So there's no reason to fret over the one one. Now, no. if if you do lose game two, or I'm sorry, if you do game lose three. game three and go down two one going into game four, which I that one really does worry me as with well. our weakest with with our with obviously our weakest pitcher because it's right. not going to be Montgomery, Evaldi, or Scherzer. So it's it's and it's going to be a, a litany of pitchers. Yeah. It's going to be uh, there's not and litany be, uh, of pitcher for the Rangers worries me. Right, and that and that sucks because that you know the injuries happening and and all that good stuff. I'd love to have jo- you know John Gray. It, mid-season form, you know, throwing seven innings. I'd yeah, love to have no him kidding. out there, but yeah, he doesn't no he, talk about not having any time to build up. So he's staying in the bullpen, which I'm fine with. And I think that his role has actually become kind of pivotal moving forward. And, and Bochy's shown no no hesitancy. And he's been great, like you said. He has. I mean, he looks like John Gray. He's hitting 97. Yeah. There's, there's no... There's no holding back. And so that's that's going to be a valuable piece out of the bullpen. Bradford's been a valuable piece out of the bullpen. So that one, yep. uh, it's going to be a bullpen game for the Rangers. It's going to be interesting to see how they decide to do it. But that one worries the hell out of me. And so that yeah. makes game three. It, it, game three is going to be nerve wracking for sure. Yep. Yeah, because they got to pull that one off. But I feel like I still feel like the Rangers have a really good shot of winning this World Series. I still feel mm-hmm. like. They're they're the better team, but it just depends on if they let all that stuff get to them. That the, the I mean, if they can if they can pick off a couple of runners, I think that would help. And it's not been Jonah Heim's fault. They they've stolen on the pitcher pretty much every time. It's yeah, not they got Jonah four Himes against Evaldi. Uh, it's not been Jonah Heim's fault. Yeah, Montgomery picked off a. Uh, uh, that was a great the guy play. that's been killing us. Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham, who had yeah. and I, I tested Ben. This uh, they played again. Uh, they played together last year. They were on the same team last year. And Tommy yeah. Pham, after he hit that home run off Uvalde in Game One, his interview in the dugout, I was like, I, I can't be super upset about that home run because of the way how genuine he was in that interview saying yeah man yeah. like he just like he felt bad about it because he like you know he said uvaldi's my dude yep. and i you know we played together last year he's he was talking about uvaldi and how great he is rather than his own damn home run in the world series yeah so uh, hey, uh, it's hard to root for you know you know not it's hard, for yeah. now, obviously. no but but i like him let's bring yeah. in someone who was actually at game two cj is it uh, Tyler? We have the someone who is at game two. Yeah, the big <laughs> head. Look at that. <laughs> Let's go. Let's hey. <laughs> Guys, you, I'm going to tell you something right now. I got y'all some really cool stuff. It was awesome. absolutely insane. Um, I kind of figured I went on a podcast right when I flew in. Laying in. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. But I got y'all some really cool gear. It was It was absolutely incredible. Awesome. Here's dude. the thing. You love that helmet. Hopefully your cousin's streak stays that they lose when he goes to the game, but win the series. Exactly. That's what we were talking about on the plane ride back. I was like, yep. you know, I said 2010 against the Yankees and this year against the, um, Astros. Yeah. Astros. Astros. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Astros. Yeah. So see if that trend continues, that's a good thing right there. Yeah. I'm telling you, CJ, I've got to take you to a game at that stadium, man. It is so loud. It's beautiful. Texas Live is insane. Um, yep. Went to Pudge's Pizza, took your advice. Yeah. Ben? Pretty cool freaking atmosphere. It's really It is, cool. isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty cool yeah. place. Oh, I'll yeah. be up, I'll be over there covering covering next <laughs> yeah. year. I'm going to take the hat off. I'm going to take the big old thing off, and then 
All right, there we go. Yeah, got, me we go. New, got me a new visor too. Nice, very nice. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you got to go. Too bad the game was nine to three, but still, you know, you got to go. So. And you know what? I stuck around for the entire thing, Ben. And I would have too. And, uh, they were all flooding out. I was like, I'm not leaving this. It's a yeah. World Series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'll tell you the best way to do it. Well, I'll give you my secret off there, you and CJ. But <laughs> I'll tell you the best. I'll tell you the best way because if I start, everybody's gonna start listening. I'll tell you something, Ben. That's crazy. I got recognized in CJ. They're like, you're Tyler Nielsen. I'm like. Yeah, they're like you were, or you, you know, the Ranger podcast. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they're like, let me buy you a beer. Let me buy you a beer. Oh, nice. <laughs> they're followers, and they're. I, I, I got like at least a hundred followers there at the game. I didn't bring any business cards, so I got. I got to start coming to more games as a fan, man, because I never see anyone because I'm up in the press box when I go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, take be, I'll be over there covering games for sure, and I, I'm, I'm damn sure I'm going to come over. This past two, the past two years have just been busy. Yeah, I just haven't been able to get yeah. free, but I'm making yeah. sure the next year that's things so are Tyler, starting that, to smooth Tyler, out. So, DJ, I was your, you on everything. I'm going to take you. No, we'll go. Let's. Go. That was your first time in Globe Life Field, right, Tyler? It was. It's amazing, isn't it? It's absolutely. I mean, you know, you look at it from the outside, and it. It does I not look pretty from the outside. From the outside no, but no. the inside, the way everything's set up, the space. I think, I mean, every MLB stadium I've ever been to, it's by far, hands down, the best MLB experience I've ever had. Nice. See, hey, you I guys, had you guys remember I got you guys remember I got to walk around the whole stadium one time too, because I lost my car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we remember called that. Us, called us about it. Guys, dudes, I lost my car. I was like, I, I think it was God. over at my house when that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah he was. It. Yeah, because yeah. I was talking to y'all for like 30 minutes trying to find my dang car. It, I By had, the way, CJ, you know, we are moved over now. I'm like, I was about to say, you look like you're in a different spot. Yep. This is a new place. Sweet. I'm like two, like less than a block from me. Yep. Yeah. You're right around the corner over there. Yep. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I had tickets to go in 2021, the Father's Day weekend, uh, but then the Amarillo Sod Poodles asked me to throw out the first pitch. Yeah, yep. So uh, that's when you beamed old freaking um Ruckus. Ruckus took one off yeah, the chest. Ruckus. I hummed it in there. Yeah. So that was that was that's I had tickets to go. I was ready to go, uh, and. Ruckus, yeah. uh, I had to had to go beat up on Ruckus with a baseball. <laughs> so that was it was pretty. It was an experience, you know, on Father's Day. My dad was there. Yep. It was a it was a great experience. Yeah, we played that on the show. Your your interview we with the, with the with the game guy. It was pretty yeah, cool. Got so. to get on the radio for and be the color guy for an inning. Yep. It was cool. It was. Cool. And I don't know what y'all talk about. I mean, Rob and I just joined, but um, another thing we we flew in. We didn't get to Dallas till around. On Friday night, we didn't get there till about eight eight fifteen, and it was in the third inning, and we were down five three. Finally, got checked into the hotel, and it was absolutely insane when Corey Seager in the ninth blasted the two run homer, and you can see the passion and all that stuff coming off, and that whole area of Dallas, the DFW, the fans, you know, even being in a hotel, you could just hear this loud sound from everybody. I was like, whoa, yeah. this is about to get real. And then when El Bombi hit the home run, <laughs> I was like, this place sounds like fireworks. I mean, yeah. it was absolutely insane. Yeah. I, and then I, I go I, to I a game. The only, thing, the, the only run I got to see home run, well, was Mitch Garver's. Yeah. And it was right down the line from us too. I was, I was like, man, come a little bit more left. I want to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been cool. Yeah. But yeah, so if the Rangers come back up 3-2, I think they have the series. If the Rangers come I back totally down, agree. if Rangers come back down 3-2, I still think they have a shot, but it's going to be pretty tough cuz this team is so pesky. They are mm-hmm. so good at moving around the bases, causing havoc. And that's the thing, you can't walk, guys. That's one thing I didn't mention about game 2 that drove me crazy. You cannot walk, guys, with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Every because, single one of them can run. Every single one of them, and I think in that second game Either all of them or all but one that they walked wound up scoring. Mm-hmm. So you cannot give them free bases. Nope. Right. And I totally agree to that. And another point about the Arizona Dombacks, believe it or not, they travel well. You yeah, know, they do. it doesn't sound like that on TV, but the section I was in, 
it was all the family and stuff, and they were loud, loud. Yeah. And it's going to be loud in Arizona when they go back. But obviously, we're 8-0 in the postseason. And the biggest one to get off your chest was winning game one. We hadn't yep. done that in 2010. Nope. Or we, we didn't do that in the World Series, and we didn't do it in the past World Series. Mm-mm. And getting that first win. Go ahead. This is another statistic that's that, that has held up throughout the entire playoffs. In each of the Rangers and Diamondbacks games this season, whichever team scored first has won. Yep. Yep. Every single game. Because we scored, the Rangers scored first in game one. The Diamondbacks obviously scored first in game two. They yep. both were, uh, the Rangers came in 7-0 and when they score first in the playoffs. The Diamondbacks came in 6-0 and when yep. they scored first in the and playoffs. And now they're 7-0 and the Rangers are 8 Now they're 8-0, 7-0 yep. and the Rangers are 8-0. So, it, now, right now, I mean, it just seems to be a trend. Whoever scores yep. first, hey, look out. That's yeah. who's going to end that. Somebody's going to have to end that to win this series. Yeah, so I agree. What, what is your projections now? I mean, both of you guys. What are, I mean, what are y'all thinking now? Head to Arizona. What do you think? We take two out of three? Or I mean, let me ask this question. Do you feel comfortable if we go to Arizona and just take one out of three and come back for no, two I games? No, I do not. No, I do not. I think yeah. I think I think you have you to gotta win. come back with two two wins. You have to win Scherzer's game and you have to win uh Evaldi's game, game on on yeah, games game five. I think game four scares me. Game four, I don't I mean game four is gonna take twelve runs if they're gonna win that game. Because it's going to be a bullpen game, basically, for the Rangers. So you're going to need 12 runs to win that game. So Scherzer has to be on, and Evaldi has to be on. And I think the Rangers take game three and game five. They come back and win it in six. But if they're down 3-2, I mean, Arizona plays so well on the road. I don't feel like – I don't know if we can take two games from them to, to win the World Series. And they can take the crowd out in, a, yep. in the blink of an eye. Yep. And you think – the you know the Rangers obviously do it by hitting home runs, yeah. by slugging. Boom, you're down five, just like that. Well, the Diamondbacks yep. do it quickly. On the it's crazy how fast they do it without hitting home runs. Like you it's said, just, if Evan Longoria has a sacrifice over, bump, she's, yeah, Evan Longoria is out there bunting. I mean, everybody's a bunt candidate, it seems, and everybody can run. He's the only one that's that's not the runner. Uh, yep. it, it seems like every damn Diamondback yeah. out there could fly. This is my personal opinion. I think they'll go in to Arizona. And as we know, like I said previously, they're, I mean, they're undefeated on the road. They're going to handle business. This team is poised. And as y'all know, it, I, I don't see no bumps in the road. I think they'll go in, um, take two out of three, and we, we come back that. and take one, one out of two in Arlington. Yep. I think, yeah, you win game three and game five. And I think yeah. you win. You win the World Series. Yeah, you win the World Series. Yeah, you lose Game Three or Game Five and Game Four. And here's the deal: they could shock us, lose Game Three, and then win Game Four and Five because yeah, their there, offense is no good talent. enough to do that. Yeah, there's you know, no and talent. like I said, or they could sweep and wind up winning the World Series in Game Five. I don't, I don't see that happening. But you know, if the Rangers get if 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 Marcus Simeon gets hot, then the Diamondbacks are in trouble. The the yeah, the offense is going to take off. But see, I don't, you know, Ben, I don't see that happening right now. It's like, you know, being at the game even last night, Marcus, you know, he's he's having these spurts where it looks like he's starting to get hot. Yeah. But he looks real. I mean, during batting practice, you know, we arrived to the same round when the gates open at four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And he was launching. I mean, just launching yeah. things. And, you know, batting practice and game time is completely different. It's CJ, but no. But he's just launching and launching these yeah. things. And he comes out and it's like he looks like a whole different player. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think the thing about it, it's like another example of um who were we talking about the other day? Uh his bats real slow. Joe um Nate Lowe. Nate Lowe. He's, he's his, starting to speed it up. He looked better. Yeah. Yeah, he looked better last night, but his bat but you can watch it just being live on the field, which I was you know, I was Watching these adjustments last night, and Tavares, I know, was real big, real key. And when he comes up in the batting box, he was button, he was button and button and button, not swinging the bat. Yeah, mm-hmm. we need yeah, to see more like, of that out of him, I think. And I've been saying that all year long. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, of his speed, of his it. speed, yeah. yeah. Especially if he's in the, the left handed batter's box, I think he can bunt for a hit. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. That's what he was. He was on the le- he was on the left side, and he was. I mean, he was laying down these beautiful bunts. Yeah, in bat in the batting cage. I mean, he's yep. just coming down. I was like, wow, beautiful. 
Yeah. Yeah. Nate Lowe's bat speed looked so much better yep. th- in this series. And, and he's actually, it's, it's weird. The game could be a whole lot different too with Simeon. It was Simeon, Jonah Heim and Nate Lowe, all three hits that they, that were long flyouts looked off the bat legit. Like they were gone. Yeah. I thought all those were gone. The wire. Yeah. yeah. I thought each one oh, of them yeah, was gone they, off like the bat. Last night the game, they were just hammered and you thought yeah. they were all gone. Like you said. Yep. But hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this real quick and then I'm gonna rejoin the rejoin real quick. It's hard to hear y'all. Okay, we we'll gotta end it. We gotta end it here pretty quick. Yeah, we're about to. I wanted to talk about one more thing, and that's why I think the Rangers have their best shot of winning this World Series. One person we haven't talked about is Bruce Bochy. Bruce yep. Bochy is the key. That's why the Rangers keep bouncing back, in my opinion. That's why the Rangers keep coming in and coming back out. I think it's Bruce Bochy. I think you look at this team. I think Bruce Bochy's attitude has been taken over by everyone. I think that nine to three loss, I don't even think they thought about it on the drive home. I think they were ready for game three already on the drive home because Bochy told them, all right, big deal. We lost the game. We're one on one. You know, we've done how many times have we done that and come back this year? Bochy is the key to winning. I mean, he's the reason they're here, in my opinion. Uh, he's a he, I mean, at least the biggest part of it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, obviously, the other additions and everything's just come together at the right time. Yep. But yeah, I guarantee you. That, and what the reason I think we're so relaxed about it is because they've already shown us they can do that. Yeah. You, the, with the with getting swept in Seattle and losing the division and having to go across the country, fly directly over our <laughs> Dallas, the DFW yeah. area, to go to Tampa Bay, and they win two there, and then the Baltimore, and went you know sweep them, and then get all, get the get the the monkey off the back. And down three two, come back and win the ALCS with two games in Houston to go to the World Series. We've seen yeah. them do it. So I yep. I have like even at the end of the game last night, I'm just like, okay, uh, we knew it was going to be a battle that we got to go to Arizona and take two or three. Yep. And you know, game three is going to be huge. But I mean, yep. I was not panicking. No, I wasn't either. No, my but wife was surprised. Thing. My wife was surprised when she saw the score and saw that I wasn't like, you know, head down crying on my chair. You know, I said, <laughs> no, nah, it's one game. I knew they were going to lose at least one, if not yeah. two. So this was and just one of those. If we really think about this, guys, we could easily be down right now. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. That, yep. how, yeah game I mean, one you look at huge. game one. I mean, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Game one and, was huge. Yeah, that, that game one, just getting that, you know, that game one, you know, that's what me and my cousin, we walked into the stadium. I was like, you know what? Regardless of what happens, let's have a good time. Yeah. Watch a World Series game. And, yes, we wanted to come out with the W. And I'm sorry, guys, I didn't bring back the W. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all good. I brought back the rally towels and the baseballs for y'all. Nice. Yes. So and it was guys, not cheap. I'm going to tell you the guys no, that I bet right it now. It, I bet it was It is not cheap. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Like, oh, he he's going to be drinking beer, and it's going to be yeah, like ten dollars a beer. It's like a two thousand dollar day, man. Yeah, man, it was. It, yeah, it was a hefty price. But you know what? It's worth it, man. Yeah, it's for you guys, for you know me being loud on here and all that stuff. You and CJ being my best friend, well deserved, man. Yeah. All right, yep. guys. Good show tonight. Thanks for, I'm glad you got to jump on here at the end, Tyler, and talk to us. Enjoy. Yeah, it. that was um, nice. I saw you were, you were calling me, but I was like, I can't. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did you yeah, that's why I, I, I haven't yet. I was, okay. I saw him. Yeah, I saw him. It was awesome. <laughs> well, let's, let's get off the air and then I'll talk to you about it. All right. All right, All right guys. Thank you for listening. And we will see you after game of number five. Yep. I'm happy to keep on doing this. Yeah. I mean, this is, Thanks for listening to the Ranger Report podcast. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and at therangerreport.com.